Bisyat Deshmai, we're going to learn Rosh Hashanah Daf Yud Gimel. We're going to start ten lines from the bottom of Daf Yud Base Omid Base. We've already learned previously that there's a concept of a Rosh Hashanah for Maisrus, which means that things that grow, one has to take Trumas and Maisrus. We've discussed this previously. Then one has to take the Maisrus of one year for the produce of that year. You cannot take a tenth of them. For example, if you have uh, 10 measures of whatever it is, any vegetable, for example, 10 measures of vegetable, you cannot take nine measures of last year's vegetable and one measure of this year's vegetable and say, this is my sir, the one is a my sir, is the tenth for the nine. That, that, that's not okay, because it, one is not allowed to take Chumas and Maestras from the Yoshon onto the Chodosh or the Chodosh onto the Yoshon. Every year has to be tithed, has to be Chumas and Maestras on its own. What, what, is the, what marks the beginning of a year? What marks the beginning of a year? We saw in the Mishnah is the first of Tishri. Rosh Hashanah, that is the time where any crop, any harvest that belongs to before Rosh Hashanah is a different year's crop than the harvest that belongs to the next year's, to the, to the time after Rosh Hashanah. The big question is that Rosh Hashanah is a date on the calendar. But what stage of the development, of the maturing, of the ripening, of whatever produce we're talking about, at what stage is it considered as belonging to last year? And at what stage is it considered next year? Which means, what has to happen before Rosh Hashanah in order for it to be considered last year's crop? What has to happen after Rosh Hashanah for it to be considered next year's crop? That is a big discussion. So those two things we have to keep in mind. There's the when and the what. When is the first of Tishri, and that's across the board besides for fruit. As we saw in the Mishnah on Daf Beis regarding the Peri Sa'ilon, then it's not the first of Tishri. It's either the first of Shvat according to Beis Shammai or the 15th of Shvat that we know as Tu Bishvat according to Beis Hillel. But what has to happen before Tu Bishvat or after Tu Bishvat to determine whether these fruits are last year's or next year's. And what has to happen to anything besides for fruit before Rosh Hashanah, the first of Tishri, or after to determine which year it belongs to. And this is going to be split up into three different categories. We have the category called, which the Gemara calls it, Tvu'a V'zeisim. Tvu'a is a term that's often used just for grains, but in this context, Tvua means the grains, the five species of grains, and, and Tiroish, which are grapes. So Tvua, which means grains and grapes, Zesim are olives, those three things. And only those three, the Chiyuv of Chumas and Maestros is Min HaToyra. And the Rosh Hashanah for them is determined by a third of Giduloi, if it's grown a third, that's when it's, that determines if it's last year's, that means if a third of its maturing, of its ripening happened last year, it belongs to last year. If a third is next year, it's next year. That's regarding the, that is regarding the Tvua and the Zesim. And then besides for that, we've got the Peris Ilon, fruits. Fruits, the determining factor is when Chanoto, which means when they emerge, which is a stage in the blossoming. It's a discussion exactly what Chanoto means. We're not going to discuss that here. But if Chanoto was last year, it's last year's fruit. If Chanoto was next year, it's next year's fruit. And then you've got vegetables. Vegetables are not dependent on Chanoto. They're not dependent on a third. They're dependent on Likito. When they are picked, if they were picked before Rosh Hashanah, they're last year's. Picked after Rosh Hashanah, the next year's. And there's another group which is interesting, and it's what we call kitneos. Kitneos is a, is a type of food which is like beans, um, sesame, and things like that, where they are used. That means it's the seed part of, the, of that vegetation, which is actually what's eaten. Rice, for example, maybe in that bracket, and different it's known, it's a group called kitneos, where it's the seed within what's grown, which is what's eaten, and that's a bracket on its own. And for there, when it comes to the kitneos, we're going to see in the Gemara that it has its own 
its own stage. And we're going to learn about that more later on in the sugya. Let's start with the Gemara insight. Nan Hosom, we learned in a Mishnah in Maseches Maesrus. Hatilson, which is a type of spice, Misha Titzmoch. When does it become Chayv in Maeser? When it starts sprouting. And Rashi explains that Misha Titzmoch means when the seeds inside start growing, then that is what, that is when it's uh, considered it's considered a food, that is when it's considered the year for Meiser. That's when there's a Chiyuv of Meiser. HaTavua. Regarding the Tavua that we said before, which Rashi explains means the grains, the grains and the grapes, Vazeisim and the olives, Mishehivi Shlish, when they are matured and ripened a third, that's when they become, that is when the year of Meiser is determined. When it comes to Shlish, if it's before the Rosh Hashanah, whenever the Rosh Hashanah is. But if it's before the Rosh Hashanah, then it's last year's crop. If it's after the Rosh Hashanah, it's next year's crop. Asks the Gemara, my Misha Titzmach. When the Mishnah says that Tilson, this spice called Tilson, then the year of Meiser is determined from when it sprouts. What stage is that? What does that mean? Misha Titzmach, the Zroim, when the seeds sprout inside the Tilson, that is when this, when these seeds are chayv in Meiser. V'hatvua, v'hazeisim ishivi u'shlish, and others are not gerous this, but we already saw that, that we saw this in the Mishnah, that the grapes, the grains, and the olives, they are chayv in Meiser. The year of Meiser is determined when they have reached a third of their ripening. Mino anamili, what would be the source for this? But, and obviously, the only, play, the only type of Trumas and Maestras we can look for a source for in the Torah is a type of Trumas and Maestras, which is Chayv min ha which is only HaTvua V'Azeisim. So this Tvua V'Azeisim, that the Mishnah said that the point of its maturing when the year of, of the Maestras is determined is Mishyavi Shlish when it's a third ripened, what would be the source for that? And we're going to see two sources. One is here, Omer of Asi, Omer of Yechanon, Umati Ba Mishmeid Rabbi Yisya Glili, some said it in the name of Rabbi Yisya Glili. He's going to bring one Pasuk. And right at the end of Daf Yud Gimel Omed Aleph, the second last line, we're going to see a second source. The source brought by Rabbi Yenison Ben Yosef, who brought a different source that a third of the maturing is considered the, the, the fruit is ready, and therefore the year of Meiser is determined at that point. But let's start with Rabbi Yechanan. Omar Kro, it says in the Pasuk, Vaitzav Moshe Oisom Leimer, Hashem said to Klal Yisrael, and Moshe said to Klal Yisrael, Miketz Sheva Shonim, at the end of seven years, you're going to have in Eretz Yisrael a Shmita cycle, seven years. At the end of seven years, Vemoyed Shnas HaShmita, at the appointed time, Shnas HaShmita, we're going to have to see what this word means, B'chag HaSukkah is the Sukkah is after the seventh year, which is the beginning of the eighth year. Rosh Hashanah, the end of the seventh year, marks the end of Shnas HaShmita and the beginning of what's called the eighth year, but really it's the first year of the next Shmita cycle. So at that point, B'chag HaSukkah is, and Moshe Rabbeinu is then telling Klal Yisrael what they have to do during that Sukkah is. The question is that when we're talking about the end of the Shmita year, after the Shemitah year, we're talking about Sukkot, that's not anymore Shnas HaShemitah. So how can you say, Miketz Sheva Shonim B'moyed Shnas HaShemitah B'chag HaSukkot? Shnas HaShemitah Maya Vidate. What's the words, Shnas HaShemitah coming to impress on us? B'chag HaSukkot is Sheminasi. By the time Sukkot comes around after Shemitah, at the end of the Shemitah year, it's already the eighth year. El Eloi Malacha. The Gemara is saying that the Pasuk is teaching us that Kol Tvua, of course, we're talking about Sukkot. And Sukkot is the eighth year. But nonetheless, Shnas HaShmita. There are things which are, that Shmita is still being practiced. What does that mean? That means that anything which had ripened a third before the end of Shmita is considered Shmita, even though in actual fact, it will become a finished product in the eighth year. And that's what the Pasuk is telling us. 
that there's something in the eighth year, the Sukkot of the eighth year, which is also as a continuation, so to speak, of Shnas HaShmita. What is that? That's this Tvua that we're speaking about here. The, that there's the Tvua and the Zeisim, which they already matured a third before Rosh Hashanah. If it matured a third before Rosh Hashanah, then even though it only became fully ripened by Sukkot, Nonetheless, it's still considered a Shemitah fruit, and the Kedusha Shviyas applies to it. And the Chachomim assumed, we're going to discuss that in a moment, the Chachomim assumed that anything which a third had become ripened before Rosh Hashanah is then finished by Sukkot. If it's not finished by Sukkot, then obviously it hadn't yet grown a third by Rosh Hashanah, in which case it's not considered a Shmita fruit is considered a eighth year fruit, a first year fruit, and there's no Kedusha Shvius on it. Omale Rabzeira le Rabasi. Rabzeira was Rabasi who said this in the name of Rabbi Yechanan. Rabzeira is now questioning Rabasi. Vadilma, maybe, Deloy Ayil Klal. Maybe what the Posuk means to tell us, indeed, that a type of, a type of, maybe it's not talking about anything to do with a fruit and the stage of its development before Rosh Hashanah, while still Shemitah, and its halachic ramifications after the end of Shemitah. No, maybe Dilmaloi Ayel Klal we're talking here about, possibly we're talking about fruits that hadn't grown at all in the Shemitah year. And nonetheless, Omer Achmona, the Torah is saying that till Sukkot, you should continue keeping the halachas of Shemitah. Just assume Shemitah to end on Sukkot. And not before. Tishmat v'tezel ad chakasukas. Maybe that lochus of shmita. You know, all the isurim of not working the ground of, of harisha and katsira and everything we've learned that you're not allowed to do in the shmita year. Maybe the pasuk is coming to tell us that till chakasukas is in the eighth year, shmita continues. It's a shnasa shmita continues, but not to tell us what type of fruits and what stage of development of fruits that were developed on shmita become. I have the halachas of Shvius. Says the Gemara, Loisol Kedaitok, do not entertain that thought that Shmita carries on. It says in the Posuk, the Posuk says, Vachag Hakotzir Bikur, we're talking about Sukkos. Sukkos is the Yom Tov where, where they would cut down, they would reap the crops, the harvest, Bikurei Maasecho, Asha Tizri Abasode, that all the work that you've done in the fields are going to be reaped. Over Sukkot's time, the Chag HaOsif Betzei Sashono, and the Yom Tov where one gathers in what one has reaped in the fields is Betzei Sashono, the end of the year. Beosbecho es Masecho Menasode, when you collect the your work, the things that you've planted, the Tvua, the grains from the field. Now the Poshup Shat in this Posuk. So what the Gemara is going to discuss now is that in the Posuk it says the Chag HaOsif. Sukkot is known as the Yom Tov, the festival of gathering. When you gather as Masecho Min Hasode. Why does it have to say it twice? So the Poshup Shat is that, and Tosa speaks this out, is that the Poshup is just telling us that this is a Yom Tov that comes at the time when one gathers. But the Gemara was somewhat bothered by this double, this, the fact that the Poshup twice mentions that it's a Chag HaOsif. So the Gemara says that from, from the extra words in this Pasuk, we're going to learn about the stage of the fruits that were grown in the previous year that are still considered as last year's crop, not this year's crop. Now, how does that work? Says the Gemara, osif My osif. What does it mean, Mechag osif? What's it coming to teach us? Are you going to say, like the Poshup Shat, that it's a Yom Tov that is that the Yom Tov is in a time when one gathers. Hoksiv, it says a couple of words later, Elomai Osif, when it says Chag Osif, it means Kotzir. Kotzir means the harvesting. That means the Osif doesn't necessarily mean the gathering as in the, the act of bringing, of gathering, as one understands the word gathering. It means the stage that it's ready to be harvested. The Chag Osif, but Tzei Sashono means that it's the Yom Tov where 
anything which was still associated to Batei Sashon or to the end of last year, which means anything which was ripened at, to a certain stage, which the Chachomim assumed to be a third from Batei Sashon or from the last year, from before Rosh Hashanah, is now fully ripe and ready to be harvested on Sukkot. So when it says here, Chag Osif, together in context with Batei Sashonah, even though Batei Sashonah is before Rosh Hashanah, Chag Osif is Sukkot, and there's a two-week gap in between them. So what the Pasuk is coming to impress on us is that the anything which is ready to be harvested on Sukkot was a, is still considered last year's crop, and the Chachomim Bekim Lulu Rabbonon, the Rabbonon assumed the Kol Tvo Shenik Tzorabachag, any produce, any grains, anything called Tvoa, and the Pashtas is that we're talking here about the Tvoa and the Zesim. Some say it's only talking about the Tvoa. Beforehand, when we mentioned Tvoa with Zesim, it was talking about the Alochas of Meiser, and regarding Meiser, then Tvoa and Zesim have the same Alochas, but regarding Shmita, not. Here we're talking about the Shmita, but Either way, without getting confused, Pashtas, we're talking here about Tvua and the Zaysim, that if they had grown a third before Rosh Hashanah, B'yodua, then you can take it for granted. That means if it's ready to be harvested on Sukkot, B'yodua, you can take it for granted, that a third had already matured before Rosh Hashanah, the Kokorile B'tzei Hashanah, and we call it B'tzei Hashanah, that it still be called last year's fruit. And if last year was Shemitah, then Shemitah applies to this Tvua. So from here you see what we saw in the Mishnah before, that Tvua V'zeisim Mishivi Shlish, that's the end of the year. And that is, now from this Pasuk in and of itself, we wouldn't have learned it out, because this Pasuk in and of itself can be understood just that it's a talking about the Yom Tov of Sukkot, which is called Chag Asif. It's not so clear, but together with the Pasuk beforehand that the Gemara mentioned, and we wanted to learn from there that the, the Sukkot is going to determine what t- t- on, that the halachas of Shmit have extended themselves on, and how did that work? And the Gemara assumed that it means that anything which is ready to be to be harvested on Sukkot, we know that a third already grew before Rosh Hashanah on Shmita last year, and anything that grew a third last year is called last year's crop. And that is the halacha that we see in the Mishnah, Tzvua Vazesim Mishiyoviu Shlish. So these two psukim together teach us this halacha. It's the extra word of the Shnasa Shmita, B'chaga Sukkah, is together with the Chaga Osif, B'tzei Sashonah B'asbacha, that teaches us that it's the stage, that something that's ready to be harvested on Sukkot is still considered last year's harvest with last year's halachas. So that is how... This, this is how the Gemara refuted the Rebzeira's question. The Rebzeira asked of Asi that maybe the words of Shnasa Shmita are there just to tell us that the halachas of Shmita, the Isurim, the Issa to work the fields continues, says, and the Reb Asi answered to Rebzeira, no. Reb Asi says that I've got this other posuk of Chag Osib that teaches us to, that this posuk probably means that the, the Shnasa Shmita of Chag is as we explained, Omale Rabbi Yirmiya Rabbi Zeira. Rabbi Yirmiya now said to Rabbi Zeira, V'kim lehu l'rabonon bein shlish, l'pochis mishlish, were the Chachomim so well versed in being able to determine in such an exact way, exactly at what point the produce is a third and what time it's a before a third, after the third, and it's exactly a third if the Tvor was ready a third by Rosh Hashanah, only then it's able to be harvested on Sukkot. Where do the Chachom, where do we find that the Chachomim are able to give such exact terms? Omar Lai. So, so Zeyra said to Abiyermia, Lava minna lecha, loitefek nafshecha, lebar melcha, sir. Did I not tell you, don't exclude yourself, don't separate yourself from these halachas. There are certain halachic definitions which the Chachomim gave us, and we accept them as they are, because the Chachomim were perfectly able to give exact measures. Kol midu is Chachomim kachu. We find in many places that the Chachomim gave very exact terms to very, very tiniest detail. 
For example, when the Torah says that the amount of water you need to be a kosher mikvah is as much water as a person, an adult, an average adult needs to totally submerge himself in the water. And the Chachamim said, Barboim sahu toivel, exactly 40 saw of water is what he needs. Barboim saw chosa kortov, but 40 saw less a tiny bit, it's not enough water for him to toivel in. So you see the Chachamim managed to measure to the exactest of terms. Another halacha, the Torah says, regarding certain halachas of Tumas Oichlim, whether it's, whether it's the Oichel, a food item, to make something else Tomei, others say it's even to become Tomei, we've discussed this in Masechus Shabbos, but the certain halachas that the size of a food item in Hilchas Tuma is the size that you can eat in one gulp, the size that fits into a person's throat. And the, the Chachom said, how much is that? Kabeitza metamit, only if it's the size of an average egg of a chicken. Tumas oichlin kabeitza chosa shumshum. But if the if it's the food is the size of an egg, less a sesame seed, a tiny bit less, ain't metamit. Tumas oichlin. It's not the size that would fill up a person's throat, and therefore it's not got that, those halachas of Tumas oichlin. Another halacha, shloisha al shloisha. The, we know that for certain materials to become Tumas Medras, they have to be large enough that one is able to sit on them. And the Chachomim said that Shloisha al Shloisha, if it's three Tvachim by three Tvachim exactly, Netami Medras. Then it has the Tuma of Medras, which is dependent upon being able to sit on it. Shloisha al Shloisha Chosar Nimo Achas. If it's three Tvachim by three Tvachim, less a single thread, Eine Netami Medras. The Chachomim knew that it's not able to be sat on and does not have those halachas of Tumas Medras. So you see that the Chachomim were able to give measurements to their exactest terms, and therefore don't question how the Chachomim could say that the produce has to grow exactly a third, not more, not less, if it grew more than a third, even a tiny bit, or if it grew less than a third last year, and it reached a third the next year, it's next year's crops. Yes, the Chachomim were able to do that. Hodar Omar Birmiya. It was Rabbi Yirmi who asked Rabbi Zeira, who questioned Rabbi Zeira, how could the Chachomim be so certain? Rabbi Yirmi actually changed his mind afterwards and accepted what Rabbi Zeira told him, that the Chachomim could have these exact measurements. Where do we see that Rabbi Yirmi himself changed his mind from his question? Hoda Om Rabbi Yirmi, that love milsi da Omri. This that I initially questioned whether the Chachomim were able to determine the exact stage of the growth of these plants to a third, that... I question that, I've, I've back, I'm changing my mind. The Boim Minei Chavrayim Rav Kahana. The Chavrayim, the Chachomim asked Rav Kahana the following question. Oy Mirashei Krivu Yisroel Beknisos on Laoretz Mehichone Krivu. They would bring the Korban Oymer. The Korban Oymer was the Korban of Bali that was brought on the 16th of Nisan. And after that was brought, they were allowed to then eat from the new produce of that year. And the question is that this barley, these stalks of barley that were used for the mincha called Korban Oimer, where did they get them from? When they first came into Eretz Yisrael, they came into Eretz Yisrael on the 10th of Nisan. Five days later, they had to bring the Korban Oimer. Where did they get this, these stalks of barley from? Im Toimer, are you going to say the Ail Biyad Nochri? Yeah. When, before Klal Yisrael came into Eretz Yisrael, the whole Eretz Yisrael belonged to the Goyim. You're going to say that these stalks, they belonged to the Goyim and they grew in the hands of the Goyim. And when Klal Yisrael came in, they took some of those stalks. That cannot be, because it says in the Pasuk, When you come into Eretz Yisrael, You should cut. El HaKohen. It should be your harvest, not the harvest of a goy. The Korban Oima has to be brought from, from produce that belong to Yisrael. And then the Gemara, by the way, just asks a question. Who told you that in the first year when they came in, they did bring the Korban Oima? Maybe they didn't. Maybe they didn't bring the Korban. Says the Gemara, no. No. Don't entertain that thought. The Chsiv, it says in the Pasuk, in Yeshua, that when they came into Eretz Yisrael, from the 16th of Pesach, that point they ate 
matzois v'kolui be'etzam ayim hazeh, they would eat from the new flower of that year. So from the fact that it says, mimochras ha-pesach ochul, mi'ikoru lo'i ochul, it's explicit that there was something happened the day after Pesach, that because of that, they were allowed to eat the flower from that year. And what is that? De'ikrivu oimer v'hodu ochli. As we know, that's always the halacha, that on the 16th of Nisan, the korban oimer is brought, after which one's allowed to eat from the new flower. So it's clear from that posuk that they did bring the korban oimer. If they brought the korban oimer, where did they get the barley from? The barley that grew by a goy is not able to be used for the korban oimer. So mehecho nekrivu. From where did they get this barley from to bring the korban oimer? Omar lehen. So the Rav Kahana answered back to the Chachomim, Kol shelo yehevi shlish biyad nochri. It's talking about that when they came into Eretz Yisrael, then on that day, there was not yet a third ripe. So if it's not yet a third ripe, it's not considered that it's finished growing on a minimum level. So the Klal Yisrael took it from the Goy before it reached a third, and, and then it continued growing by the Yisrael. They took the land, they bought the land, however they, they arranged it, but it continued, it reached a third in the hands of the Yisrael. If it reached a third in the hand of the Yisrael, then one was allowed to use it. Asks the Gemara, now, and this is now Rabbi Yirmiya. So that was what Rav Kahana answered to the Chachomim, that they brought the Korban Oimeh from produce that had grown less than a third in the hands of the Goyim, and then it grew a third in the ha- it reached a third in the hands of the Israel, and they were allowed to use that for the carbon oimer. So now Rav Yirmi is asking, Vadilma Ail, maybe, if I was right what I said before, that the Chachomim do not know how to be so exact, maybe the produce that they took from the Goyim had already reached a third by the Goyim. Veloy Kimlu, and it's just that they didn't realize it if what I said before was right. Elo, it must be, says Rabbi Yirmiya, Kimluhu, the Chachomim knew how to determine exactly, over there in the time, the Chachomim knew how to determine the stage that these stalks of grain, of the barley, had been, had, had been matured already. Hochanami Kimlu, and so too, the Chachomim, they could determine that anything that was grown a third before Rosh Hashanah is then able to be harvested on Sukkot, and is the third is the point where we know that it belongs to last year and not to next year. Asks the Gemara, the Dilma may be loy ayel klal. How can you bring proof from the Oimer in Eretz Yisrael that the Chachomim knew exactly when a third was? Maybe they took stalks that had not yet matured at all. That just not nowhere near a third. Not we're not talking about that they might have made a mistake a bit before, a bit after. No, maybe they hadn't grown at all, and they took the barley, and then, and and then from that barley they brought the korban oimer. Avleicha the Ail River, but when it had grown a quarter, bein shlish lepoches mishlish loikimlu. Maybe once it's already grown a, th- a quarter, and now you're just not sure: is it a third? Is it more than a third? Less than a third? Maybe in that indeed the chachamim are not able to be proficiently knowledgeable to know exactly when that happens. So then what would be the proof? Says the Gemara, that can't be. Because it says in the Pasuk, the nation came up from the Yardin, but also on the 10th of the month of Nisan. Which means they came into Eretz Yisrael, on the 10th of Nisan. In the event that the barley that they took from the Goyim was barley that had not grown at all, not even a quarter, they came into Eretz Shal on the 10th of Nisan. The Korban Oyma had to be brought on the morning of the 16th. Is it possible that in five days it became completely ripe and matured because the produce that was used for the Oyma had to be completely ripe? Elomai, you have to say, the Ail River Oidanka. You have to say that it was already at least a quarter or a sixth that already matured, grown, and that's when the Chachomim took it, and then they, the extra bit that it grew from the point when they when they, when they took it, they purchased it from the Goy until they offered it up onto the as a korban. At that point, 
the, it finished getting matured. The Gemara, that's how you have to learn. So it was, they took it just before it was a third grown, and then it, the last two thirds it matured in those five days. Says the Gemara, that also doesn't make sense. In five days it can become completely ripe. That also doesn't make sense. So whichever way you hold it, assuming that they came in Territ Israel on the 10th of Nisan, it's a posuk that that's what happened. The, assuming that they, and that is the halacha, that they had to bring the Korban Oimeh, and they did bring the Korban Oimeh on the 16th from Tvua that had not grown in the, in, under the property in the, belonging to a goy. And they had to take the Tvua before it grew a third. Whichever way you hold it, the, the, there's not enough time. Because if it was ripe enough that five days later it could be used as a carbon, then five days earlier it was already mature enough that it's considered grown by the goy. Grown by the goy is not good enough for the carbon oimer. In the same way as growing from a third to being completely ripe, you're saying that may have happened very, very quickly because it's Eretz Atzvi. For the same token, it could be that the produce that they took hadn't grown at all. And in five days, it very, very quickly grew very swiftly. In which case, you have no source whatsoever that the Chachomim knew how to determine between a third and less than a third. And if the Chachomim didn't know how to determine between less than a third and more than a third, then everything that we've said till now falls away. Elomayis lech you have no choice other to say, even if you say that the, the, the barley that they cut down or that they were used for the Korban Oimer, when they came to Eretz Israel and took it from the Goy, it had already reached, it was just less than a third, and it just had to ripen from a third until it was ripe, then how can that be? It's two, Five days is not enough. Because it's based on what it says in the Pasuk. The Pasuk says in Daniel that Eretz Yisrael is called Vayamid Be'eretz Hatzvi. That Eretz Yisrael is referred to as the land of the deer. Like a deer is the swiftest of all animals. And therefore Eretz Yisrael is the swiftest of all lands and things can ripen very quickly. Eretz Tzvi Ksivba. And therefore if you took the barley that when they came into Eretz Yisrael on the 10th of Nisan was almost a third, then it would be able to ripen from that stage and on. Says the Gemara HaChanami Eretz Svik Sivba. For the same token, you could say that really the Chachamim didn't know exactly when a third was. And they took the, the barleys that had not grown even a quarter, hadn't grown at all. It was just very, very small still. They took that barley and Eretz Atzvi, in five days, it ripened. And then you don't have a source to what Rabbi Yermia said, I found a source from what of Kahana answered to the Chachomim, I found the source. The Chachomim knew exactly when a third was. You wouldn't have a source from here. And we have to resort back to Rabzeira said. Rabzeira said, don't ask questions when the Chachomim give exact measurements because we have many sources that the Chachomim knew how to give exact measurements. Continues the Gemara, Maske floor of Chanina. We're now going back to what we saw on the fourth line at the top of the Omid. That the Gemara brought the Pasuk, Vachag Akotzir Bekurei Masecho Asher Tizra Basode, Vachag HaOsif Betzeis Hashono, and Baos Bechos Masecho Min Asode. So the Pasuk says twice that Sukkot is a Yom Tov, is a time when they would gather, the Chag HaOsif, they would gather their crops, Betzeis Hashono at the end of the year, Baos Bechos, when they would gather as Masecho Min Asode, and the Gemara wanted to know what does that mean? Why should it be that way? And the Gemara said that the words Chag HaOsif doesn't mean gathering, it actually means harvesting. What it means is that anything that was ready on the Yom Tov, when they would gather, anything that was ready to be harvested by that Yom Tov, then Betzei Sashono is still considered last year's crops. And the Chachomim knew that anything that was ready and ripe enough to be harvested on Sukkot reached a third by Rosh Hashanah, and that's the source that that Tvua, when it's matured and ripened the third, belongs to the previous year. We're asking a question on that now. Maske floor of Chanina, or Mimotzus Omris, can you really say the high Osif when it says in the Pasuk, the Chag Osif that Sukkot is the Yom Tov of gathering, what it means, Ktsirhu, it means it's talking about th- produce which is ready and, and, and mature enough and ripe enough to be harvested on Sukkot. 
Why would you say that? There's another pasuk we're also talking about sukkahs that says v'chaga sukkahs tase lecho. You should make yourself sukkahs shivas yomim seven days. But osbecho migor lecho miyekvecho. That the sukkah the schach would be made from with the gathering with your gatherings of migor lecho from your threshing floor miyekvecho and from your wine vat from your wine press. And these are things that are not mekabel tuma. They grow in the ground. And that's what you have to use for schach. Omar mar bepsoiles goyren veyekev from the psoiles from what's left over in the goyren on the threshing floor and in the wine vat in the wine press. Hakos of medaber. That's what the posuk. That is what you have to use for schach. If so, when it says v'chag ha'osif, maybe chag ha'osif is not tell a yom tov explaining to us what you do. You gather the the produce from the from the threshing floor, because that's what it says, or from the fields, because that's what it says, as the Gemara asked before. No, that's not the Pshat. Ha'osif means it's another name of Sukkot, because the Osif is referring to collecting what would be kosher schach from the threshing floor. Maybe that, and that's what the Pasuk means. V'chag ha'osif, the Yom Tov, where you gather, ba'ospecho migor necho mi'ikvecho, then, but say Sashon at the end of the year, but ba'ospecho, when you gather as Masecho min asade, there's no double term here. It's not twice telling us what you do. The first time in the Pasuk it says osif, referring to Chag osif, is a name of the Yom Tov. And the reason it got that name is because of the requirement to use the ospecho, your gatherings from the gornachom yikvecho, for the kosher schach. Omer Abzeira. Abzeira responded, Ho milsa voi biyodon. We thought that we had a good source from this posuk, using this posuk, that anything that grew a third before Rish Hashanah is, is then able to be harvested on sukkahs, and that's the source that for Tvua, the zeisim shavi shlish, that the third, third of its maturing is the point when, it, when we determine which year it belongs to. V'osar of Chanina, Nar of Chanina, came and shod the Narga and he threw an axe at what we thought was a good proof, and therefore our proof falls away. We don't have that posuk, and from the posuk itself of Miketz Sheva Shonim B'moyed Shnas Hashmito B'chag is in and of its own, without that second posuk, we cannot learn it, as the Gemara said before. That maybe the Posuk would be telling us that the halachas of Shemitah continue, that you're not allowed to work on the land. Elo minolon, we're back to the question we had at the bottom of Dafyid Beis, Amud Beis. What would be the source that for Tvua and Zaysim, the point in time that determines which year they belong to, is the Shlish, is when they grow a third, what would be the source for that? Says the Gemara Kedetanya, we're learning it from a Brayser, Rabbeinuson ben Yosef Oimer. We learn it from a different Posuk. It says in the Posuk regarding Shemitah, when Klal Yisrael would ask that if we have to have Shemitah in the seventh year, we can't work our lands. In the eighth year, we don't have what to eat because we can only then start planting and waiting for the crops to grow. So we're going to have a seventh year and an eighth year till the harvest is ready. In the ninth year, what we're going to eat for those two years? And the Hashem responds, I will command my bracha lochem bashon ashishis in the sixth year. Lishleishonim, that the in the sixth year the fields are going to give you produce that will suffice for year six, year seven, and year eight. That's the literal translation of the pasuk. But in this pasuk it says v'osos esatvua, which the the literal translation is that the fields will make the the tvua, the grains. Lishleishonim means for three years. But the Gemara learns from here, the Osos, when does the Tvua become finished, complete, and ready, or ready enough to be considered as, as having been mature to belong to that year? Lishloishonim means Lishlish, a third. So in this, when you have in close context the Osos and Lishlish, Lishloish, the Gemara says, Al Tikri Lishloish, Elo Lishlish, and that is the source to Remez. From this pasuk that we see that the tvoa, when it grows a third, then if it grows a third before the beginning of the new year, whenever the new year is, whether it's the first of Tishri or whether it's in Shvat, whenever the new year is, if it grew a third before, then that is, that's the time.
asks the Gemara, of this pasuk, it's not as if there's extra words in this pasuk that you can learn from. I need this pasuk just for itself to answer the question. Klal Yisrael said, what are we going to eat? Hashem answered that the field is going to make produce for three years. What's superfluous here? That you can use these words to say it means a shlish, that the fruit, that the halacha that we've just learned. Answers the Gemara, ksiv kroachrina. Because we have another pasuk that already tells us the same answer that the fields on the sixth year are going to give produce for three years. And therefore, this pasuk didn't need to give this answer again. And therefore, we could use the words in this pasuk to teach us about the shlish. Because there's another, the answer is the Gemara, there's another pasuk that says, Uzratem es hashono ashminis, that you'll plant in the eighth year, v'achaltem in atvua yoshon, and you'll eat from the old produce, Ad until the new produce is ready in the ninth year. Ad also until the new produce is ready. Toichlu yoshon, you'll eat from the old fruits. So you see clearly from this pasuk that in the sixth year there will be enough produce for year six, seven, and eight. So I didn't need that other pasuk. Therefore, that other pasuk that says v'asos is atvua lishloishonim can teach us that tvua is considered ready already from the stage of lishlish when it's grown a third. Continues the Gemara, and now we're going to go back to the halachas of Meiser, of different food items, at what point in their development they we determine that a new year for them, depending on where they are, before Rosh Hashanah, at what point in the development of these foods, if it's before Rosh Hashanah, it's last year's crop, if it's after Rosh Hashanah, it's next year's crop. Now, now some we learned in Maseches Shviz. Ha'oyrez, and I'm not going to translate them because it's not so clear exactly what they mean in contemporary terms, but these are all kitnyos. As we said before, kitnyos are plants that the, the main object of this plant is that the seed inside them is being eaten, and that's a whole group of foods called kitnyos to the exclusion of the five species of grains that are similar, but they have their own that they have their own halachas. So, so says the Mishnah, if they took root before Rosh Hashanah, then then they belong to the previous year's Maisa year. Umutorin b'shviyas, in the event that the next year's Shemitah, these are considered last year's heir of Shemitah. If before Rosh Hashanah, the onset of Shemitah, they were Hishrishu, they already took root, then they belong to last year, and there's no Kedusha Shviyas on them. Ve'imlav, if however they took root after Rish Hashanah, Asurin Shviyas, then they, it's considered that they took root on Shmita, and therefore they are Osur. Umis Asrin Lashonah Abba, and in the event that the next year is not Shmita, if it's any other year, then it has the Maiser status of the next year. That's the Mishnah. Omar Rabba. Rabba says, Rabba's now asking a question. Omur Rabbonon, and we're going to learn a little bit more about the details of this later on, but the Chachomim said as follows, Ilon Bosor Chanota. And we're going to learn about this later on in the Perek, that fruit trees, that if the Tubishvat, according to Beis Hillel, the whatever was Chanota, any fruits that emerged before Tubishvat belonged to the previous year. Fruits that emerged after Tubishvat belong to the next year. That's regarding fruit trees. Tavua, which is the grain and the grapes, Vezeisim and olives, bas or shlish. There it depends whether they reach the beginning of the new year, whenever that new year is for them, by having reached a third of their development, as we saw in the Gemara before. Yerek, vegetables, bas lakita. Vegetables, it depends on when you pick it. You picked it before Rosh Hashanah, it's last year's vegetables. You picked it after Rosh Hashanah, it's next year's vegetables. But honey, keman shavinu rabonon. But here, these kitneis, the oiras, doichen, pargin, and shumshamin, and that it says from the time that they took root, like what what are they being compared to? That was Rabba's question. Hod Omar Rabba. Rabba said, no, Rabba explained as follows. He says, regarding the Tvua and the Zaysim, which are Minat Torah, that's fixed. We need to find the source in the Torah for the, and the source we, as we saw before is a third. All the others the Peri Se'ilon, the Yurokis, and the Kitnyos, there the Chiyuv of Trumas and Maestros is only made Rabbonon. So the Rabbonon could allow themselves to determine a time whenever they felt was the most appropriate 
and so to speak, in a way that would cause the least complications that people would not get confused between last year's crops and next year's crops. So Rabbi says, Mitoyksha suyin prochin prochin, which really prochin prochin is a term used for harvesting. Since these kitneos are harvested in small stages, they're not harvested together. The reason the harvesting of the of the kidneys is called prichin, is prichin is, is a term for crumbling. And since the kidneys, they would crumble the outside of the pod, wherever it is, of the kidneys in order to get to the seed, the beans inside it, therefore the harvesting process was called prichin. But it was done in small stages. And therefore they would sometimes have, if you would give it, if you would say it's the same as the yerek, for example, that it's bossa lekita, sometimes they would pick a few more now and a few later and a few later and they would pick some before Rosh Hashanah, some after Rosh Hashanah. It's not like other vegetables where generally they were harvested all at once. Each field was harvested at once. Here it was harvested over a length of time and therefore it was very easy for them to get mixed up between the kidneys that were picked before Rosh Hashanah and those picked after Rosh Hashanah. Therefore the Chachomim said we're going to give a time that that is more or less global for the whole field, and that is Azra Abon and Bosa Shrasha. Typically, one would plant, one would sow these kidneys and plant these kidneys at the a whole field at a time, and therefore they would all take root at the same time. As the Chachomim said, anything when it took root, anything that took root at a certain point belongs to that year, what took root later belongs to the next year. Omale Abaya. Abaya says, I don't understand. You've got a problem that that uh, these kidneys, they were harvested in stages and were not harvested the whole field together. And therefore you'll have lots and lots of piles of, of these kidneys and they're going to get, were we to say, for example, that it's Bashas Lekita, then we're going to get confused and all these little piles, some, are, some were, were locked, some were picked. And one day, the next day, the next day, it's all going to get confused and they each one have their own year, so to speak. And therefore, the Chachom did not want that. Abayah said, I've got a simple solution for you. Why don't you take all the little piles of these kidneys on the thrashing floor, and collect all those little piles and mix, blend them all together into one big pile in the middle of the thrashing floor when you're finished with all of them. And then now in this pile, you've got a whole big mixture of these kidneys where some of it is from a previous year and some of it is from the next year. And But because they're all mixed together, we can comfortably assume that they are evenly blended, which means if you take a tenth for Misa, we can assume that a tenth of every pile is in this handful, or if a tenth is a handful, but if you took a tenth, we can assume that the same ratio of one to ten of every pile, of every little pile, of every part of those kidneys is in the Misa. And then it's, so to speak, I've, it's as if I've taken from each little pile separately. So then what's the issue? Since we can assume that, that it's evenly distributed all the various piles of kidneys in this one big pile, then whatever you take from Isa, it's as if you took the Misa on each bit onto its pile. Milo Tanya, did we not learn of such a concept that we're allowed to comfortably assume that things are evenly distributed? We saw from Rabbi Yossi ben Kippur, Omar Meshum, Rabbi Shimon Shazuri. Rabbi Shimon Shazuri was speaking about Pul Hamitzri, which is a type of Egyptian bean. Shazar o Yilizera. Sometimes this bean was, was planted to be used as a vegetable, as a yerek. Sometimes it was planted for the seed inside, for the beans itself to be eaten. But we're not going into those details now, but it says there, in the Brisa, that uh, assuming they were planted for the seed, then if miktsaso hishrish lifnei roish hashana, or miktsaso hishrish l'achar roish hashana, ain't toyrmin or maestrin mizeh alzeh. As we said before, the kitniyos, the the time, the break, the point where we assume that's it, it's already ripe enough, is misha hishrish, is when they took root. So Shimon Shazuri says, if they took root before roish hashana then it's last year's crop. And if it's after Rosh Hashanah, it's next year's crop. And you cannot take truma or maestros from one to the other. If you should enter, 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 you should enter,
So what should he do, says Rav Shimon Shazuri? He says exactly what we just said now, what Abaya suggested. He should gather all these piles of pul hamitsuri into the middle of the threshing floor and then take maestros from this whole big collection and then it will transpire that you've taken because we are comfortably allowed to assume that they are evenly distributed in this big pile then you've taken chodosh for the chodosh and yashon for the yashon so why were you worried that if you would go boss a Lakita and you'll say that since they collected some before Rosh Hashanah and some after Rosh Hashanah, they would get confused? Well, what confusion is there? Just put them all into one pile, assume they get evenly distributed, and then, and, and then there'll be no issue of Chodosh and Yashon. That's the question of the Gemara. Answers the Gemara. Omar Lei, Rav Shimon Shazuri, Kormas, you're quoting me, Rav Shimon Shazuri? He is the one who learns that Yesh Bilo, he assumes that when you take solids and these beans, these kidneys, and you merge them into a big pile, he assumes that they are evenly blended and that take, then you can assume that, the, that if you take 10%, you've taken 10% of every little pile that was put into this big pile. Verabonon sovri ain bilo. But the Rabbonon, they hold that regarding solids, regarding liquids is different, but regarding solids, they say with solids you have no right to assume that it's evenly distributed. So if you take 10% of the big pile, there's a good chance you've taken that in this 10%, much more of it is a ratio of the kidneys that came from one little pile then came from another pile. And therefore you haven't taken an exact miser from each pile independently by taking this miser from the big pile. And therefore, according to the Chachomim who say, Ein bila, that we don't assume that solids are evenly distributed, according to them we can understand the concern of the Chachomim. And therefore, since these kidneys are, some t- are not collected at the same time, therefore they said, that we're going to find the time which is universal to the whole field, which is the time it took root. If it took root before Rosh Hashanah, it's last year's produce, irrespective of when you harvested it. If it took root after Rosh Hashanah, it's the next year's um, produce, irrespective of when you collected it. Omer Yitzchok Bar Nachmeni Omer Shmuel. Shmuel now said, Halochah ker Yosi ben Kippur. Halochah is like a ben Kippur, she'omer mishum of Shimon Shazuri, who said in the name of Rabbi Shimon Shazuri. What did Rabbi Yisib ben Kippur say in the name of Shimon Shazuri? He says that regarding this Pilha Pulha Mitzri, these beans, that you can put them all into one big pile. And now we're now assuming that the reason that Shmuel held like Rabbi Shimon Shazuri is because Rabbi Shmuel holds not only of the halacha that you can put it into one big pile, but he even holds of the reasoning that he holds Yesh Bila, that solids get evenly distributed in a big pile and evenly blended. In which case, Maskevla Rav Zeir, Rav Zeir is asking a question now. Om Yoma Shmuel Hocha, does Shmuel hold Yesh Bilo? Vomer of Shmuel, Shmuel says, La Koil Ein Bilo. Shmuel rules, like we saw before from the Rabbonon, that there's no Bilo. Chutz Miyayin Veshemen, besides for liquids like wine and oil, or liquids, they distribute evenly. If you had a produce of different liquids that belong to different years, then and they got mixed into one, then he would agree that you can take 10% of the whole mixture, and then we can assume that 10% of the wine and 10% of the oil is in the 10% that I took, took aside for the maestras. But that's only with liquids, not with solids. So how can Shmuel say that the alochas like Rav Shimon Shazuri, that you can, that you can make one big pile of this Pula Mitzri, even those from both years, can be piled together if you hold of Ein Bila. Says the Gemorish to Mitzay, when Rav Zeira asked this question, he forgot something else that Shmuel says. Hold on, Shmuel. Shmuel says, Shmuel says that the determining factor of when, of, of when, of when it belongs to last year or this year is not the Hashrasha. It's not when it took root. It's when it became a Gemar when it became fully ripened. Once the fruit was finished and ripened, that point is when it's chayv. If it became ripened before Rosh Hashanah, then, then, it's, then it's one year. If it became ripened after Rosh Hashanah, then it's the next year's. So what's actually happened here is that, Shimon Shazuri said, that Shmuel says, I agree with Shimon Shazuri that if you have all these 
these beans, these Egyptian beans, the Pula Mitzri, that some of them took root before Reish Hashanah and some took root after Reish Hashanah, I think you can put them into one pile, but not because of what Rav Shimon Shazuri says, because Yash Bila, because I say that the time it took root is not the relevant time. The time is when it became ripened. They all became ripened after Reish Hashanah, so they all became ripened in the same year. And therefore, there's no issue of the two piles. It's the same year's harvest. It's not a different year's harvest. And therefore, everything makes sense. Shmuel holds Ein Bila. By solids, they do not distribute evenly. And Shmuel holds that Hakil Hoylech Achar Gmar Pri, that it's all dependent on when the fruit is actually ripened. And he agrees that the Pul HaMitzri, that some took root before Rishon, and some took root after Rishon, it's considered the same year's fruits, the same year's beans, because the time it took root is not the relevant time. Says the Gemara Tzricha, and I need all these three statements of Shmuel. Number one, that the halacha is like of Shimon Shazuri, that you can put all these beans in one pile. Number two, that generally there's no bilo by solids. And number three, that it's the end, it's the ripening of the, of the fruit, of the food, which determines which year it belongs to. Diyash min on halacha of Shimon Shazuri. If you'd only say the halacha is like of Shimon Shazuri, that you can put all these beans, the beans of both those that were, uh, took root before Rosh Hashanah and those that took root after Rosh Hashanah in the same pile, have them in the, I may have thought, Mishum de Kosova Yesh Bila. As we thought at the beginning, that when we thought, when Rabbi Yitzchok Bar Nachmeni said that in the name of Shmuel, Alochaka, that Alochaka like Shimon Shazuri, we thought that he holds Yesh Bila. Komash Malon, that's why Shmuel has to say, Lakel in Bila. I don't hold of the concept of Bila that solids get evenly distributed. Ve'ish Ma'inon, and if you would only say Ein Bila, that I don't hold of bila, that of solids being evenly distributed, have I I may have thought that karabon and svirale, I may have thought, ah, you don't hold of bila. So if you have two piles of, of these Egyptian beans, of some of which took root before Rosh Hashanah, some took root after Rosh Hashanah, then you cannot merge them into one pile like the Rabbonon who argued with the Shimon Shazuri and says, ain bila, and he says you cannot merge them into the same pile. But Shmuel says you can merge them into the same pile. Komash Malon. That's why he says Alocha Kupshim and Shazuri. The Alocha is like Kupshim and Shazuri. That you can put them into the same pile. How can you put them in the same pile if, if you hold like the Chachomim that you don't assume they're evenly distributed? It must be holds that the determining factor is not whether it took root before Rosh Hashanah, but whether it was ripened and whether the fruit was finished by then. And since the deciding point is the Gemar Pri, I don't have an issue with the two piles. The question is, if so, why do you have to say, pri? Just say, I don't hold of Bila, and I do hold of Abshim and Shazuri's Halacha. And then we would have to say that there's a different reason why, why you can mix the two piles of these Pul HaMitzri, and it must be because you hold of Gemar Pri. Why do you have to say explicitly, that and the Gemara is going to ask that now. Vyoshmin on Hanetarit, if you would say those two, and it wouldn't say explicitly that Hakel Hoylech Achar Gemar Pri, then we would just think there's a contradiction in what Shmuel says. Have a minna kashir the Shmuel the Shmuel, like the Gemara thought before. We'll just think it's a contradiction. We won't know how to make sense of it. Kamash Malon, that's why Shmuel had to say explicitly Hakel Hoylech Achar Gemar Pri. I hold that it's the Gemar Pri which is the determining factor. And since I hold this, the Gemar Pri is a determining factor, now you can understand why on the one hand I say Ein Bilo, and on the other hand you can mix the two piles, like Rav Shimon Shazuri says. Says the Gemara of Yesh, Minon Hakel Hoi Lechachar Gemar Pri. What would be if Shmuel would just say, Hakel Hoi Lechachar Gemar Pri? And we wouldn't say anything more than that. Then why does he have to say that the Halacha is like Rav Shimon Shazuri, that you can put the two piles together, if it's going after the Gemar Pri, and both the Gemar Pri of both those piles was after Rosh Hashanah, of course you can put them into one pile. Have them in, I may have thought, I feel a Tvua V'zeisim. I may have thought that even the Tvua, the grains, the, the, the grapes, the olives, I may have thought that all of them are go, that if the, it was before their Rosh Hashanah was, there was the Gemar Pri, it's dependent on Gemar Pri. So I may have thought there also, Kamash Malon, no, because by Tvu and Zeisim, there we saw it's not Gemar Pri. There it's Shlish, it's when it reaches a third. So that's why he says, Halacha Krib Shimon Shazuri, that I'm ruling like Krib Shimon Shazuri to impress on us that only where Krib Shimon Shazuri 
And the Rabbonon argued, which is only regarding the Kitniois, over there, I hold, it goes, not like Rav Shimon Shazuri assumed that it's Basa Ashrasha, it depends when it took root. No, it depends on the Gemara Pri. But wherever Rav Shimon Shazuri did not voice an opinion, namely Tavua and the, the, the Tavua and the Zaysim, in that case, I don't say Gemara Pri, I say Shlish. That Bamai the Palig, in the case, in, only in the places that Rav Shimon Shazuri argues, asks the Gemara, Beleishminon Hani Tarti. Why doesn't it just say that I, the halacha is like Rav Shimon Shazuri? That you can put the two, that you can put by the Pula Mitzri, that by the Kitneas, you can put the two piles into one and say that it goes after the Gemara Pri. And then everybody will know that you, you're only talking about where Rav Shimon Shazuri is talking about, which is Kitneas. And you hold this Gemara Pri. And that's why... And that's why there's no issue with the two piles. Why do you have to say, Lakil ein bilo lomoli? Why did Shmuel have to say, Lakil ein bilo? By solids, we don't assume that they get evenly distributed. Why do you have to say that explicitly? Answers the Gemara, you're right. I didn't need to say that Lakil ein bilo. Everybody will understand Lakil ein bilo because that's why I, the reason I pass and I can shim and shazuri, that I can mix the two piles is only because I hold that it's Achar Gmar Pri. So why do you say lakol ein bila? How come Ashmelon de liyain v'shem and yesh bila? Because besides for lakol ein bila, I added something else on. I said liquids. We do assume that they get evenly distributed, and in order to impress on that, that's why Shmuel says that in contrast to solids, where ein bila regarding wine and oil, regarding liquids, yesh bila. We're just going to continue now the Gemara till the end of the sugi of the Maestros. Tanya Rabbi Yisya Glili Oim Rabbi Yisya Glili learns. From a pasuk we mentioned before, the pasuk says, The pasuk happens to be talking about what you can use for kosher schach for your sukkah, but the pasuk compares the gornacha, the grains on the thrashing floor, and the yikvecha and the wine press. Rabbi Yisraeli says that ma goyren v'yekev, in the same way as the goyren and the yekev. And Rashi adds in, when you collect, when you when there's oisif, when it's the harvesting, that all the halachas of the harvesting, which we said before, that it's dependent, for example, by Havuas Shlish, the, by the, the Tvua, the Goyren and the Yekev, from when they grow a third, we know that's it. If it grew a third before the Rosh Hashanah, which whatever is considered Rosh Hashanah, but from a third before Rosh Hashanah, that's it. Why? Because the Miuchadim Shegedeli Malmei Shono Shavra. Because we assume that once they've grown a third, then they have all the water that they have absorbed up until that point is enough to give them the nourishment that they need until the end of their growth. And therefore, if they reach the third before their Rosh Hashanah, then the water that it's going to become ripened on is last year's water, and therefore it's last year's produce. Or Ms. Asr in the Shana Shavra and the Maestras is from the previous year. Afkal, so too, anything else, for example, trees, when fruits, as soon as the Chanota, the fruits emerge, if it emerged before Rosh Hashanah, they're Rosh Hashanah. It happens to be Tu Bishvat. If they emerge before Tu Bishvat, we assume that all the liquids, all the water that's needed for this fruit to become fully ripe has already been absorbed from the water that was absorbed in the tree, the sap, before they emerged. And therefore, if they emerged before the Tu Bishvat, then it's last year's fruits. Af culture gedelim al mei shonosh avra mis asim l'shonosh avra, and therefore the fruits that emerge before Tu Bishvat belong to that year. Yotzu, and this is the source that Yerokis, that vegetables is different. We saw before in the Gemara Yud Gimel Amud Beis that regarding vegetables, it's basar the kita it depends when you pick them, and from here we learn that when it comes to the Yerokis, the vegetables she gedelim al mei shonosh that they one constantly one cuts them, they regrow. And they, the, the vegetables, they nourish themselves not just from water that they, have, uh, that they have absorbed up until a certain point, but constantly they're being watered and they're constantly growing from the water they're receiving at any given time. And therefore, up until the time when they get picked, they are still nourishing from the waters of that time. And therefore, it's the new year, Ms. Astrim Lashon Abba, the Maisa is of the next year. That's Rabbi Yisiyah Glili. Rebbe Kiva says it a bit differently 
but it would seem that it's almost identical, and the Gemara is going to then tell us what the difference between Rabbi Kiva and Rabbi Yisiak really is. Rabbi Kiva Oimir, now what do we learn, that your gatherings, that means the halachas of Maestros are learned, from similarities between the Geiren and the Yekev, from the Tvua, from the grains and the, the grapes. Ma Geiren Vyekev, in the same way as the Geiren Vyekev, Miuchodim, that they are a species, Shegedelim al Roiv Maim, that they grow on the rainwater. That means they don't need to be irrigated. Most of their water, that means the, 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 they, they mostly grow from the rainwater. They do not really need to be irrigated. And the rainwater came earlier on in their growth. And therefore, Ms. Asher and Rashan Rosh Avra, therefore, they are all, their Meiser is from the previous year. Afkal, so too. Any other species, Shagdeli Mal Rav Maim, that they grow, they do not need to be irrigated, and they grow on the rainwater that comes at the beginning of the seasons, then Ms. Asher and Rosh Hashanah Avra, then for Maisa, they belong to that previous year. Yotsu Yorok is the exclusion of vegetables. Shagdeli Mal Kol Maim, that it's not good enough that just the rainwater at the beginning. They need to be constantly irrigated and have water all along. And they then, the maisa for them, for the vegetables, is the next year. It depends on when you collect them. And since you collect it after Rosh Hashanah, it doesn't matter at what stage they were earlier on, since they constantly have need of water. What's the halachic difference between Rabbi Kiva, who says that it's a species which is G'dayli Mal Rav Mayim, which doesn't need to be irrigated, or whether, as Rabbi Yisya Aglili says, that, that, they are, that they are nourishing from the water of the previous year. Or Rabbi Vo, Rabbi Vo says the difference will be B'tzolim Hasrisim, Upul, a certain type of an onion, Upul HaMitzri, and this Egyptian type of a bean, Ikebinayu, well, that's going to be the difference between them. Ditnan, and we're going to see that in, in a Mishnah, B'tzolim asrisim, or Pula Mitzri, Shemona mehemayim shloishim yem lefnei Rosh Hashanah. If the last 30 days before Rosh Hashanah, you deprive them of water, that means they, you, you, you force them to rely on the rainwater, and you did not irrigate them, you didn't give them any water other than the rainwater that they'd received before, the Mishnah says, Mis asrim l'sha'ovar umutorin b'shviyas, that is that that the the year of the Maisa is the previous year, and if the previous year was was the year before Shemitah, then there's no Kedushas Shvius on those fruits. The Imlav, however, if you continue, if you did irrigate them, if you did give them water after within the last thirty days before Rosh Hashanah, then Asurim B'Shvius. First of all, if the next year is Shemitah, then these B'Tzolim and this Pul, it's as if they became. They grew on Shmita, as they are Shmita fruits. And also, Ms. Ashim Lashon Abba, in the event that the next year is not Shmita, then they are for Maestros, they belong to the next year. And there's a big discussion here in the Mepharshim where do we see in this Mishnah that it's a difference between Rabbi Yisya Glili and Rabbi Kiva? Is this Mishnah Rabbi Yisya Glili or Rabbi Kiva? It must be one of them. If it's Ike Benayu, if it's the difference between them, this Mishnah must conform with just one of them. So Rashi seems to explain that this, in the first Pshat in Rashi, that this Mishnah is going on, that he picked them after Rosh Hashanah, and this Mishnah is only following Rabbi Yisi Aglili. Rabbi Yisi Aglili says that it depends which year, from which waters that it was, it was maturing on, and the, the waters, since, these, since you deprived them of water towards the end, so the whole maturing and growing of these B'tzolim, B'tzolim Hamsrisim and Pula Mitzri is from the previous year. And therefore, this Rabbi Yisya Glili says, since they were G'daylim al mei Shana Sha'avra, therefore it belongs to the previous year. However, according to Rabbi Kiva, it doesn't depend so much on what you did as to what type of species it is. And since this is a typically a type of species that one would have continued growing on the water that you irrigated it, he would say that even if you deprived it of water, it would belong to the following year. That's how Rashi seems to explain in his first explanation. And in the next year, we're going to continue from here.